extra time. It's Rudy Land yeah. and Jared Dudley. We're uh, gonna do Oscars recap, I guess. We Oscars talked about it. Oh, we're doing Oscars recap. Huh? We correctly picked every one of the movies, every one of the selections, even though we both made different selections. Are you yeah. happy with Shape of Water's win? Um, I guess. I mean, it's nice for Guillermo to win, I guess. You know? Yeah, but is, should that be what it's about? Somebody who, you know, about did good fucking? stuff in the past? Like, did you well, that's really what enjoy this Oscar the movie? Was? You like no. Three Billboards better, yeah, right? Yeah, Three Billboards should have won. I mean, Three Billboards... You like Phantom Thread better, way better yeah. too, right? <clears throat> Absolutely, yeah. I mean, this, this, this Oscar was... It was pretty much a Lifetime Achievement Award. That's what it know. feels like every time to me. Either that or political yeah. statement. Tell yeah, me. There's a lot of political statements. It was brutal. I actually watched it. I know it was torture. I haven't watched I, I had I to never mute it. watched it. I basically had to mute it a lot of times. Because, Where were we wrong? Where were we right that you can remember? Um, I didn't remember. I got... Out of the ten categories that we did, I got six of them right and you got five. And... Um, Damn, you fucking got the memory of a goddamn fox, man. We got to get you to Vegas. We got to get to you down to Mexico with this six hundred million dollars. I remember you got best original score right, which, which was, was Shape the Shape of Water. Water. I picked Phantom Thread, you know, because it's a better score, and of course it lost. Um, well, I didn't see. We, it. I like right. I like the music. In, yeah, the um, score Shape in of Shape Water. of Water is good. Um, Had a good mix of the of like uh, score and. You know, music, uh, I popular picked, music. I, I picked uh, Roger Deakins for Best Cinematography, and he won, of course. And he deserved it for that what movie. Was, uh, he, what did he do? Blade Runner 2049. Okay. And you picked Hoyt Van Hoytema. I liked his name. <laughs> yeah. What did he do? Uh, Don Kirk. And um, uh, for Best Supporting Actress, we both picked Allison Janney, and she won. She was really she was good. She was good. She, she was good. If not for Sean, she would easily be the gem of that film. Yeah, she was good. And, and honestly, after seeing so many shitty films that we have, it's like, wow, I tell you, was actually pretty fucking good <laughs> compared to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, maybe we were a little too hard on it. I mean, um, I tell you, was. What did we both? I gave it like a six, maybe. No, you gave it a five, I think. Okay. I gave it a six. I just. I wanted to give it a seven at first. And yeah. You were like, what the fuck? I really yeah. dislike the skating parts. Yeah, the skating was There's terrible. a lot of boring moments. But, um, so we both picked Alice and Janney. Sam Rockwell won uh, for Best Supporting Actor for Three Billboards. Um, Who else was nominated for that? Woody, Woody Harrelson. Harrelson. Yeah, and um, I can't remember. No, I don't no, I don't worry about yeah. anybody else. I was curious from the same movie. But, uh, yeah, that was good. He deserved it. Um, uh, for Best Actor... Gary Oldman won, which was total lifetime achievement award. But you know, it's it's that that was them. You know, yeah. we're sorry we didn't give you it to you for Tinker Tailor Soldiers. Bye. Here you go. Here's for. Were Darkest there any Hour. other movies you think he should have won for? Ah, uh, no, I don't think so. I think I mean he's always been good. What about like the professional? That's I think oh, that's, he was really great. You're, in that. He's never gonna get an Oscar for that. I mean he's yeah. great and so over the top and hysterical and it's it's fucking amazing mm -hmm. it's just this performance art <laughs> it's, yeah. it's absolute insanity and uh but yeah no he you're never gonna get nominated for that mm -hmm. um and uh for best actress francis mcdormand won you're right i picked her and you picked uh meryl, meryl streep i picked meryl fucking meryl streep i'll bet on the uh two to one yeah. you took the long shot you got uh, it you pulled it in and uh for best director I picked Guillermo, and so did you. So we got that one right. So Guillermo got his Oscar, his lifetime. I haven't, award. I haven't seen Phantom Thread, but I'm willing to bet yeah. that Paul Thomas Anderson should have probably won that award. Yeah, either that. I mean, based on technical merit, you know, because that's the way I look at best any, director. Any of his movies, is, any of his movies, they are you, you the most beautiful movie that yeah. year, probably. I at mean, least you, you, that I can remember. You could have gave it to Chris Nolan for Dunkirk, even though I didn't really like that movie. What technically was, what um was it but, just the technical side yeah it's just enjoy? the technical side of filming everything yeah. uh, but um yeah for best picture we i think i think you picked get out and uh, i yeah. picked i picked shape of water and so shape of water won so shape of water won best director and best picture yeah it really kind of why did people like it so much uh, that's understand. the thing. Is I don't really think that many people did like it. 
And why did the, it win? I think the critics liked it, and they all were just. It's like annihilation, me. man. All the critics are in love with it. I mean, I didn't hate it, but yeah, I'm not. The audience, it's not like you know? a great, great movie. You no, know? it's. I got. I, I want to watch it again. I'm pretty sure I'm going to see it again. Yeah. Honestly, it's probably already out of theaters, though. <laughs> yeah. Um, and for original screenplay, we skipped the screenplays. Um, you picked Jordan Peele for Get Out. Which I can't fucking believe he won for a fucking B movie. Yeah. Makes me fucking sick. Yeah. It really does. It makes me well, fucking I sick thought, in my stomach. I thought it was good. I liked the movie. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, hey, there's a lot of people who like yeah. it. You know, I, I think it's totally I overrated. I also think but, it was really yeah. helpful that it was his first movie and he's also a black man. Yes. I uh, think that it really was, helped. It was, hey, you're black. We're making a statement here. Yeah. We're not Oscar so white anymore. Um... Yeah, but Smart McDonough should have won it, and yeah. Taylor Sheridan was nominated. He should have won. What um, did Mark McDonough write? Martin three Mc... billboards. Okay. And for best adapted screenplay, uh, Call Me by Your Name won. The gay love movie. We both got that wrong too. So. Wait, what did it win? Best adapted screenplay. It was based mm. on a book, so. Yeah. Mm. So that was. That was all the categories, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm never gonna watch the Oscars again. Um, <laughs> Bullshit! You're gonna no, watch it next year. No, I'm not honestly, because Blade Runner and One River totally should have been nominated. Um, I I'm glad I watched it because I wanted to see Roger Deakins win yeah. for Best Cinematography, and he gave you know a really great speech. He's one of the greatest DPs of all time. Um, and you know I, I do love Guillermo, even though I didn't like the movie. And, you know, his speech was really nice. And so it was nice to see him win, but even though I didn't really like the movie. Yeah. Um, you know, and Francis McDormand winning was but nice. But that's, that's the thing. That's why I hate the Oscars yeah. and, like, all awards like that. It's just a big patting circle yourself. jerk. Yeah, it's a circle jerk patting yourself on the back. It should be. Yeah. I'm going to sound like I realize I'm not the first person to say this, and it's pretty fucking obvious. Like, it should be based on what film, what movie, what film is the best. But it, it's never been that. It's always been a political thing. It's always been, hey, this indie movie, you know, you spend a bunch of money for the Oscars, give them the screeners, and it's just, it's you got to play a game. It's political, yeah. you know? Why do you think Meryl Streep has, like, fucking 20 awards? John Williams, I believe I mean, you told me, has, like, 20 awards. Well, John Williams is, is, like, one of the best, I think, composers probably ever. Do you want to know something crazy? Many of his most iconic themes are from, uh, I believe, Dvorak. I just ripped off everybody. It's, it's. I don't know if you want to say rip off, but it's, it's very similar yeah. to. I have it on my phone. I'm just gonna look it up. Yeah. What some? Um, what are some of your favorite John Williams scores? Jaws for sure. Yeah, I mean, I'd have to look at the IMDb, but you know, obviously. I really like uh, my one of my favorites, Star Wars. The. Um, oh yeah, all of his Star Wars stuff sounds just great. I mean, the fa the one in uh, Episode One for sure yeah. is really. And, I mean, listen, you know, he, he loves making music, I and mean, he doesn't need to do it. The guy's fucking rich as fuck. I mm. mean, you know, and he's, like, in his 90s, and he's still fucking scoring movies, and he's still intelligent, so. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, I didn't know that there was controversy about him, like, maybe ripping people off. No, I don't know if there's controversy. I think just somebody brought it up, and everyone's yeah. like, oh, all right. It's yeah. just one, um, one song has... It's, uh, I really am, it's driving me crazy, I can't think of the name, but, um, it has, the, it's exactly the same as Jaws, basically. Huh. Yeah, well, I mean, a lot of composers, they'll kind of riff on their same score, like, that's what Danny, well, yeah, Danny yeah. Elfman's been doing the same shit for, like, 20 years. I like, uh, Danny Elfman's style of stuff. I, I feel don't like, like anything he be... does anymore. I mean, yeah, he's what has he done now. lately? Uh, he just does, like, superhero movies now, and, like, he was, like, he even put, like, the old Batman theme, which is great, uh, in the most recent, uh... Dvorak. Dvorak. Symphony Number no. 9. Yeah. That does sound familiar. Maybe he was just inspired. <laughs> I really like the one from Star Wars where Luke is looking at the sun in, uh, the first Luke's one. Theme? Yeah. Must be Luke's theme. I really like that one. It's very awe-inspiring to yeah. me. Certain themes in movies are really good, and then there's a lot that just sort of... Yeah. They sound the same, yeah. and they're very forgettable. I, I like listening to music, mu uh, movie scores. You know, it depends, you know. I've never really sat down and listened to one, honestly. Really? I mean, 
not outside the movie. I mean, maybe one a few times, just randomly, I just watched the movie. I'm like, oh, that song was kick ass. You remember the theme from uh, the heroin movie with Sean Wayans and Jake Gyllenhaal? Jared Leto, pardon me, and Jennifer Connelly. Uh, it was Requiem for a Dream. Yeah, Darren oh, okay. Aronofsky. I was like, I was like, I was uh, my first thing I was thinking about was Blow. That theme. Was, was, I found that theme for that one very intriguing. Yeah, I haven't revisited Requiem for a Dream in a long they time. They used it for you'll really recognize it. It's yeah, it's, it's like it's one, one, of those, one of those. Watch movies. it once and you're good. Yeah, yeah, it's very. Disturbing. It's they used it for a lot of uh, trailers and stuff, so you'd recognize it if you've heard it. Um, yeah. I don't feel up to the task of mimicking it, though. I yeah. could obviously not do a great job. So, we, we didn't do too bad to, yeah. for someone who hasn't seen, like, any of I the I essentially movies, saw Shape of Water and I, Tanya. And you saw Logan, which was another nominee. It was nominated? For Best Adapted Screenplay. I should have said that should have won. Yeah, you said, uh, for Best Adapted, I'm trying to think. It must have been Logan, because I feel like... Maybe you did like, say Logan. Yeah, yeah, what else would I have picked? I wrote it down. <laughs> yeah, diligently taking notes. <laughs> well, I didn't think we were going to do this segment, but I was like, oh, I wonder who won. <laughs> Keeping scores. <laughs> we um, we should, we actually bet kidneys, so. Oh, yeah. Right after this, I, uh. Do you ever know a guy who had one kidney? No. I, I, there was this kid in high school that I knew. He was, like, we, <laughs> he was such a fucking idiot. And, like, <laughs> We had gym class with him. Yeah. <laughs> and he would just, like, every time we were doing something in gym class, he would yell to the teacher. He'd be like, I can't do that. I only have one kidney. I can't do that. I can't do that. I only got one kidney. I only got one kidney. See a fucking right, Jamaican, an old Jamaican woman? <laughs> exactly. He's an old Jamaican woman. <laughs> if, see, that's the thing. I feel like it'd be rough for him because oh, in so my funny. elementary school, I'm pretty sure at least some people be gunning name, for his missing kidney What do you spot. think his name was? Gunnerson. No. Gunner, Gunnerson. Charles. His name was Charles. 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 There. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was. Oh, man. Yeah. I don't got a kidney. I only got one kidney. <laughs> Did you ever um drink with him? No. That's no. liver anyways, so it doesn't really matter. What does your kidney do? Uh, it filters like blood. It filters urine, I think, too, right? Maybe. <laughs> liver. What does your liver do? Yeah, it, it Filters bile. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. You remember biology much, much better than I do. Oh, yeah. What are the six stages of mitosis? What are the differences between meiosis and mitosis? Uh, fucking you. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> Touche. Um, yeah, so, uh, since we saw a shitty heist movie, do you maybe want to give, uh, give a couple picks on good heist movies? Die Hard. Die Hard's um, a heist movie? Yeah. What would you classify it as? Uh, more of like a terrorist movie. No, because they... are holding the building hostage. In order to just rob them of all their bonds and stuff. They're really yeah, thieves. Yeah. I don't know. I never thought Dyer was an ice movie for some reason. Well, think about it that way. Like, the whole point is they're pretending to be terrorists so that they get the power shut down so they can get into the vault. Sorry I just suggested and then <laughs> ruined the movie for you. That was really getting Hans Gruber vibe from uh, the <laughs> Irishman in uh, Hurricane yeah. Heist. He was awful. Every time Not he great. like grabbed the guy in the face and was screaming. That at happened him. a lot. At least three times, I someone don't got get mad. But you're making me mad. Yeah, it was... They uh... left the brother. I left this out of our segment. They left the brother alone to fix the generator. Like he led... leads him down there and then just walks right up the stairs yeah. and leaves him. Oh, like... He just keeps going back to this one door. With his little pick lock. And he's just like, ugh. Oh, it's it's like, stupid. Yeah, just a lot of illogical things. The, so, uh, what's a good heist movie from, from you? Give us a uh, good heist I'm gonna, movie. I'm going to go with an indie one first. Which is probably hardly anybody. Because I'm a hipster. Oh, yeah, I'm I know hipster. about everything. Yeah. That nobody knows. Um, I wear wraparound <laughs> shades like an old man. Yeah, I've got my vest on right now. <laughs> and my wax this mustache. Is, <laughs> this is warm as fuck, my friend. <laughs> This is warm as fuck. But uh, I'm going to recommend a movie called The Lookout. And yeah. uh, it's with Joseph Gordon-Levitt. And, is he uh, super young? Yeah, he's young in it. It was like right after he did Brick almost. And, um, I don't even know what that is. Yeah, it's like a noir movie set in high school. It's really good. 
But, um, yeah, it, it's similar to this. It's about these guys who try to rob a bank during a snowstorm. This li It's a small town. There's a little bank. Was Reindeer Games like that at all? Yeah, I never rain, saw rain, it. Yeah, Reindeer Games. was a storm integral to the plot? Uh, it was about robbing a casino on Christmas because there wasn't that many people. Okay. Yeah, so... But the lookout is really, really fucking good. And it's got shades of, like, Memento in it. Um, I can't remember if I really liked Memento or if I thought I it was too it's, tedious. It's, it's better than Memento. It's it's really good. I'd recommend that one as my uh, first pick for a good heist movie. I'll give you a bad heist movie. Well, oh, not boy. a bad technically, but a, you know, of the times heist movie. The Killing. Uh, Starring mm. Sterling Hayden and a bunch of others, 50s and 60s actors. I couldn't name any of them. <laughs> except for the guy who was also in Pads of Glory. I've seen him in a bunch of yeah. other things. The one guy that gets shot in the parking lot. I you have a good him. memory. You have a pretty yeah. good memory. That's very good. I wonder why. <laughs> I don't know. I know exactly what he was in The Killing, but it just surprised me. I mean, when's the last time you watched The Killing? I actually watched it not that long ago. It was maybe like six, seven months ago. Yeah, it's pretty good, though. Yeah. It's not a great movie. I mean, it's technically it's good. Yeah. For the time, you know. It's going to have cheesy dialogue because they talk like it's the it 50s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's, you know, it's an interesting look at how an early how. Yeah. An early film master, I guess you could say. Yeah. Some bullshit like that. Yeah. I feel like I'm always jerking off Stanley Kubrick. Does yes, it feel like that? You really like jerking off Stanley Kubrick. He's a good, good guy. You still haven't seen Barry London. <laughs> well, it's just so long. I started Heaven's Gate like two weeks ago. I still haven't finished it. I like Heaven's Gate. That's a good movie. That's not the a nice movie. The Criterion, you mean. The Criterion cut yeah. of Heaven's Gate. Beautiful, epic you know, masterpiece. If you um, great heist movie, <laughs> very boring. It actually is kind of a heist movie. I'm gonna make an argument right now. Don't, don't tell me. I want to see it. I haven't seen it. Oh, you son of a bitch! I have the perfect case. Anyone who's seen it, you can yeah. make an argument that it is a heist movie. Yeah, I definitely want to check that one out. <laughs> it's 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 it is long, but it's not boring. Well, it's it's filled with a lot of stuff. You know, yeah. that things going on. It has a very um. A very apocalyptic premise, let's say. Apocalyptic premise. Yeah, let's yeah. leave it at that. That's very ambiguous. Okay. okay. Yeah, uh, for my last pick, I'll go with, uh, since we're on the theme of Michael Cimino, uh, I'll go with Thunderbolt and Lightfoot. I haven't seen it. I've yeah, heard of I, it. Uh, I haven't seen it. I really, really like it. It's classic 70s. See, the problem with like him, <clears throat> Cimino, Friedkin, you can get a really great movie or you can get a really shitty boring one yeah. he, he had one. a good run for his first few films and then he flew off a cliff but the um, deer hunter is still one of my favorite movies it has it's yeah. so fucking i don't know tragic i guess yeah. you could say oh it's definitely a tragedy jesus the whole fucking movies about russian roulette and that's PTSD. why I, I like his movies like that because he takes his time man you get to know yeah. the characters organically you get well, to know the situation organically yeah, everything's three hours long You're it's so subtle man it's so subtle yeah but um thunderbolt and lightfoot really really good young jeff bridges is fucking great clint eastwood is amazing apparently they didn't get along on that movie michael cimino and clint eastwood but he he gave a really great performance, and they have this just great relationship. And the heist is is cool. It's a really enjoyable movie. See, here's the problem for me: are a lot of Clint Eastwood early movies, like '70s and before, they're very cheesy to me. Really? Wow. I haven't seen many of them, but at Jeez. least the some that I have seen, it seems very aren't cheesy. cheesy at all. No. They're really fucking dark and nice. Oh, realistic. what? Are you, now that you mention that, I'm fucking up. I'm sorry. Pale Rider was good for sure. I think it was oh, 80s. Josie Wells. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Am I? I'm, I'm tired. Yeah. I'm sorry, guys. I let down Clint. <laughs> I, um. Gran Torino was kind of boring, though. Uh, I really liked Gran Torino. I liked it, but there was a lot of points where I'm like, all right, come on. No. Yeah. Let's just get on with it. It's basically the unofficial last Dirty Harry movie, kind of. 
basically like officially, or is this some whack job? Just theorize it. No, it's basically what kind of what people feel like because he, you know, is you know, it's basically like you know, Dirty Harry retired and he's a Korean War vet and he's you know, it's his, Kicking his ass. last days. <laughs> oh, he's, Although he doesn't he's, actually he's, kick ass, nah. except for like one time, I think. Yeah, he kicks ass a couple times and then, well. If you haven't seen it. <laughs> his performance is electrifying, though. I love his um, old, gruffy old man. Get off my lawn! That's the movie where everyone started that meme. Yes. <laughs> I'm trying to think of something super dramatic he said, but I can't. Like uh, Most everybody in that is non-actors, too, besides him. That Seriously? Was, that was the first movie he they did. They just with... went to some random Hmong community? Yeah, he wanted to just hire, like, unknowns. He tried That's that recently neat. with his new movie. It worked out. Movie. Like, nobody, oh, yeah, ever, it did. nobody really took all good. me out of it. It didn't work in his recent movie, though. What movie? 1570 to Paris. It it's, looked bad. Oh, it's fucking it looked horrific. really bad. Horrific. I didn't like American Sniper all that much, to be honest with either. you. I thought no. it was really cheesy and fucking pandering. Yeah, I didn't like it either. I haven't, well, I saw he was okay. But, I mean, it, I didn't not, see it. Not something I really want to recommend to people. A lot of Tom Hanks' work as of late is very homogenous. Do you me. know he's gonna he's gonna play Mister Robert, uh, Mister Mister Rogers? He's gonna do a Mister Rogers biopic. He doesn't really look or sound like him. I know he that, he didn't look like Walt Disney either, and he played Walt Disney. He's just you know. He looks like Captain Phillips. You know, it's just... he's our generation's Jimmy Goddamn Stewart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, He's no, a lot like, better actor, though. Oh, of course. A lot better actor. Here we okay. go. He based his whole career on Jimmy Stewart, and he's better than him. Well, yeah, he's got more Oscars than him, I think. He's got two, so. Yeah. Let's support your. Uh... Well, you know, I, I, I just we we gotta get over there. The 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 killer could be there. Uh, National treasure, Jimmy Stewart, shit all over him. <laughs> I just, he's so, and it's so fucking frustrating. Like, he yeah. sounds like he's from the 50s and everything, man. Well, basically, he, everything he, he did was in the 50s. Well, he did some later stuff, didn't he? Yeah, he did, you yeah. know. Some stuff with Hitchcock and later, you know. Sometimes you just get busy or not. I'm trying to remember the insult he said to the Italian man. You Guido fuck. <laughs> he didn't yeah, say that. that. That's the thing is like if this that movie came out today, everybody would be like, "That's the most racist movie ever." Because even back then, people were like, "That movie's racist." <laughs> I remember seeing. I saw it. It came out in like 2008, 2009. Well, he's playing a guy yeah. who's kind of a racist. Yeah, he's an old codger from the fucking Korean War. What yeah. the fuck do you expect? And he um. Yeah, I think he even calls the guy who breaks in his house or something, you gook. He, you calls, gook he says zipperhead many times. <laughs> zipperhead. <laughs> he said zipperhead at least a dozen times, yeah. probably. Gook Cause, many times. Because the whole point is that this kid who lives next to him tries to steal his car. A Gran Torino, yeah. oddly enough. Yeah, well, I wonder how they picked the car. Yeah, I know. I wonder how they picked the title of the movie. <laughs> um, anything else as a, of note you, you want to get your, into? Uh, your last heist pick. Oh, all right. I, um, I covered a lot of really good heist movies. The Friends of Eddie Coyle. I was going to say Heat, but a lot of people have seen it, I bet. The Friends of Eddie Coyle. It's yeah. 70s. It stars Robert... Not Robert Mitchum. It stars... It is uh, Robert Mitchum. It is Robert Mitchum. I'm sorry. Number four, Bobby Orr. Peter Boyle. Peter Boyle. Um... Another guy who I just saw in a movie who I didn't see in anything else, but I saw him and I'm like, wow, I didn't, I don't, I can't believe he's in this. But it's more of an ensemble piece. Eddie Coyle is an aging Boston low-level gangster. He's facing a prison charge up ne up New Hampshire, and he's trying to either, you know, make a deal with the prosecutor or find a way to get out under from underneath it f within his organization. Peter Boyle is like a crime boss, and, you know, he obviously doesn't want to get turned into police. Yeah. Pretty exciting movie. It's very, <laughs> it's very good. Jeez. I really like it. The yeah. performance. I love Robert Mitchum. He's so sad in it, man. Yeah, he's miserable. He's just a miserable fucking guy. He's... He reminds me a lot of Clint Eastwood and Gran Torino, by the way. Really? Wow. Just in the way he talks, like I, uh, I only saw that movie because Martin Scorsese was talking about it, and uh, he's, I, I just, he I don't knows like movies, it. man. I've never, oh, of course he does. He's, I've never seen. I never had any. Martin I didn't realize Scorsese he recommended really it, but I saw yeah. Bicycle Thieves and I fucking loved it. 
Yeah, The Red Shoes is another movie that he talks about yeah. a lot. Which when I is that seen from? Yet. Super old? Super yeah, it's new? very old. Hmm. Basically, Black Swan and all those movies are kind of extensions of it. Okay. But, um, what didn't you like about it? Um, well, it's just, it's a miserable film. And yeah. that ties into the 70s. And well, the yeah. ending of the movie, uh, just, you know, everyone's a piece of shit. You know, you fucking Peter Boyle, the yeah. slimy fuck talking to the guy it's at the end. It's Boston just, Underworld, man. That's, I just, I don't really like the heists. I don't really like the yeah. violence in the movie. Well, the, that's the thing. The heists it's, weren't really the focus. The heists no. were just sort of, they were a means for Eddie's escape. Yeah, it's just... It's a very depressing movie. Yeah, and some that's what I like about it because a lot of like, crime movies they play it up like it's a fun and exciting lifestyle. Yeah. yeah, and he's a snitch, and and after seeing the Friends of Eddie Coyle, I really understand the ending of The Departed with the rat yeah. fucking crawling, which I fucking hate. Is which I think is garbage. I like The Departed. I, I like The Departed a, really a lot. Movie. I just hate that fucking rat on this cell at the end. It's yeah. just, it totally undermines Leo's character. Yeah. yeah, everyone's a fucking rat. You know, it's just well, like, that's you. that was the whole point of the movie in a way. Mm. What's the point? You're both looking at the a loaded gun. What's the difference? If you're facing, you're a cop or a criminal. If you're facing a loaded gun, what's the difference? Yeah. If you're everybody's a rat in one way or the other everybody's a good or bad in one way or the other. I feel like that's yeah. that's what the whole point of that movie was. I guess. But that's what I like about Friends Betty Coyle. It was so dark, so dour. Like, even the way people would talk, like, there's this one guy, gun runner, he's making a deal. The guy who he's making a deal with, he meets him in the woods, and he's like, well, come on up, follow me. All the money's over here. He's like follow you in the middle of the goddamn woods i'm buying m16s from you <laughs> you think i'm this life is hard man but it's a lot harder if you're stupid go get the guns go get the guns come back i'll give you the money <laughs> yeah eddie this opening monologue is so not opening monologue when he's yeah. talking to the gun run from the beginning it's one of my favorite yeah. exchanges man yeah, i should rewatch it he know. um uh Here's here's the thing, kid. I'm the kind of guy, you let me down, I'm coming for you. Watch my review, guys, of Friends of Eddie Coyle. I um, make some bad jokes and, you know, give a pretty good, concise summary of the film without giving uh -huh. anything away. Isn't I hate YouTube film critics because they always, they just talk, they show a clip of the movie, they show basically the entire movie in clips. And they just summarize it. Yeah, they summarize it. They ruin the, the whole movie. movie. Yeah. That's why I only watch reviews after I've seen the movie. I try to, but there's a lot of movies where it's like, I'm probably not going to see it, so fuck yeah. it, I don't care. I'd rather watch this now. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, the only thing about Friends of Eddie Coyle I remember is, like, him and... Isn't he, like, living with his mom or something like that? Yeah, that's his wife. Phone? Oh, it's his wife? Yeah, that's his wife. Oh, uh, yeah. He just got out of prison. She's, yeah, she's an old lady, but he's a fucking old man. Yeah, I thought that was his mom. In any other movie of that the time. Phone! In any other the movie phone! of that time. Wouldn't they have put the, um... I just remember that. Wouldn't they have made his wife, like, a younger, at least somewhat attractive woman? Right, yeah, it'd be like Tom Cruise in every movie where he's, you know, he's in his He's 50s, dating a fucking 17-year-old. <laughs> right. Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. Because he's got Just For Men shoe polish in his guy. <laughs> One more heist movie, and then I'll give you... Another random suggestion. One more heist movie? Going Clear. The Scientology documentary. <laughs> oh That's a great heist movie <laughs> if you want to learn about a real heist. Okay? <laughs> Going Clear. It's about, you know, an examination of uh, Scientology. History, what's mm. going on in it. People who are in it, talking about it and stuff. For um, the final piece of the puzzle... A special at your local Walmart. <laughs> you can see them again for the first time. That's the tagline. For the double feature. How do you see something again for the first time, my friend? Yeah. Can you explain that to me anyways? <laughs> for nine ninety six plus tax, depending <laughs> upon your state and country, you can own 1408. An average horror movie starts out really well, but really loses its wheels by the end. And... What could possibly be, bleed? <laughs> what could possibly be the black and white version of the mist? I have not verified it. Yeah, I think it should have both versions. 
Uh, I don't know though. It's like a cheapo double disc version. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, hopefully for your sake. I hope it does. It'd be pretty dope. Yeah. Um. Any other anything else we got here? Uh, strange noises, perhaps. Splooge Magoo, goodbye. Vaya con Dios, <laughs> muertos del muerto. It's National Women's Day. Have you cut off your own dick and thrown it into a meat grinder yet? That wasn't that was an actual line in the movie? <laughs> no. No, this is this will be the actual line. This is the one I think is pretty good. Fast How much money do you think Vin Diesel makes off Fast and Furious? Each movie? He's a producer too. He's gotta make twenty plus million. No, he's gotta one. make forty, man. Twenty Daniel is Craig, like, twenty is what like Jim Carrey Dan, would make. Daniel Craig makes fifty in the million off each bond. Yeah, and that's like considered astronomical. Leonardo DiCaprio only makes like twenty million a film. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I figure. You think so? I figure he makes at least twenty plus million. Okay. With uh, with the Fast Furious, because each one makes like a billion dollars. So yeah. I figure, guarantee they pay him like twenty million <laughs> at least. Now that Paul Walker's dead, yeah. I mean, yeah. he's yeah. the only guy. Well, him and The Rock. Yeah, The Rock, I have yet to see a good Rock movie that he was featured in or starred in. Mm -hmm. One of the most awful ones was um, that one with Mark Wahlberg where they're bodybuilders. Oh, and Pain and Rock, Game. Tony Shalhoub. Oh, yeah. God, yeah. Michael Bay, fucking terrible. It was really bad. I was excited for it, too, because I was, I was like, oh, Michael Bay is going back to R-rated movies. You know, Maybe yeah. he'll actually do something good, but no. Well, what uh, what R-rated movies did he make before that was good? What's a good Michael Bay movie? Oh, uh, The Rock, uh, yeah. Bad Boys 1 and 2, which mm -hmm. are, I fucking yeah. love those. those I, watched, I watched the rewatch Bad Boys. It reminds me of this kind of, this movie. Really? Just like cheesy shit Blue that there. makes no sense. That doesn't make no sense. Great action like, movies, though. Yeah. I you watched the first like them, one. I fucking... never watched the second one. I oh, watched the, the first one pretty recently. Absolutely some... batshit insane, the second one. <laughs> it's fucking great. I don't know. Maybe I was just expecting more because everybody always... I've always heard people talking about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're... they're I mean, they're, they're action comedies. They're yeah, not they're not like, like a... I wasn't... Ex I not don't... a serious movie. Yeah, but not like... I mean, it's Martin Lawrence, dude. No. 